We're looking in chapter 18 and 19 and the encounter between Jesus and Pilate. And it's like it's come to the crunch. And the crunch comes around the word truth. And Pilate says, what is truth? And he sees that Jesus is innocent. And then he condemns him to be crucified. And I'm just reflecting a little on what's going on inside Pilate at that point. To go so strongly against the conviction of his own conscience. To see the truth and to not do it. I think it's a scary encounter because it reminds me that we're all capable of betraying the good that we know within us. But I want you to think of Pilate as if he was a, a chat show host. Imagine somebody like David Frost or Terry Wogan, all right? Wonderful men. I'm not making any personal comment. But you think of that kind of easy toleration and broad smile and the public appearance. And Pilate, you see, was a public man. He was the number one honcho. He was big time. He was big. And and yet, he had to do life on a shallow level, on, on a it was sort of smarmy and polished. Hello, hello everybody. Everybody happy? <laughs> Keeping everything kind of going. Most of the time, he's not doing serious, serious uh, work like this. He's doing PR. He's trying to keep all the little lobbying groups happy. And he doesn't want to commit to anything. And so he has to stay sceptical and fashionable. Can you imagine him walking down the steps with a microphone? And he's also, he wants to be merciful to Jesus. He does. He wants to be kind-hearted. He wants to let Jesus go. He can't see the point. What is the point of executing somebody? What, what have you done? They say I'm a king. Oh, uh -huh, you're a king? Uh, not of this world, right? You know. And he's playing to the crowds. Oh, you're a king, are you? Can you imagine if a Christian appeared on like <laughs> one of these TV programs? And they're trying to, and the Christian is trying to be real and sincere. And the chat show host is trying to play for a laugh. Do you wonder, it makes me wonder whether Pilate was just looking around him, making sure everyone was looking. Oh, you're a king. Oh, what, what's truth then? What's truth? You, you know, and then not pausing. For reply, And then you come to this awful encounter when all that facade doesn't work for him at all. All the political panache doesn't work because there in front of him is truth itself. And this man, despite all that you might think, this man standing in front of him could be the real thing. Could be the real thing. I am, my kingdom is not of this world. And Pilate stops. <laughs> he, doesn't know what, he doesn't know what to do. He is out of his comfort zone. He says, what is truth? And here is truth standing in, in front of him. And now, to such a character as that, Jesus refuses to, 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 to explain himself. He doesn't give any reply. He holds his peace. And Pilate is troubled and, and worrying around. He's completely lost his peace, but Jesus holds his peace. Remember what Jesus said, you do not cast your pearls before swine. And Paul said, the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit. So Jesus had truth to give, truth to live, truth to be, but Pilate could not receive it. But what about the priests then? You see, Pilate wasn't sure. It could be that Jesus was a con man and the priests were right. But the priest knew, the priest knew that Jesus was innocent, right? man once said, why, what evil has he done? Do you remember the, the blind man in John chapter 9? What evil has he done? And they pounced on him and threw him out of the synagogue. And here, in chapter 19, they pounce on Pilate in the same way. So if you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. And they're like bigots insisting on their own version of what is the truth. This is the truth, this is the truth, the truth as we say it, and if you say anything different, we are going to bomb you. And the crowd roar their approval. It reminds me of reading about Stalin's show trials where he gets people up 
He tells them that, they've con uh, that they're conspiring against the state. And everyone says, yeah, execute them. And they're led out to be executed by the hundred. Stalin's great big trials. And this is what bigotry does. Bigotry creates cowards. The claims to infallibility. It means if you, I don't want you to think, I don't want you to discuss this. You just have to th do and think what I say. And it's turning private opinion into a civil crime. Stop thinking and Pilate sees through all the fallacies and he dares not reply. He dares not come against him. They turn him into a wimp with their show of strength. They know one letter to Caesar, this man is fomenting, is, is allowing terrorists to, you know, one snidey little letter and, and Pilate knows his, his days in Israel might be numbered and he's worried so he sees the truth and it's not in the Jews but they have bullied him into submission sometimes we do that to each other doctrine can become something to bully people with it doesn't matter what the doctrine is it, it's the point is how you believe it and how you live it out and faced with it people either become Fanatics or skeptics, but not believers. So what should, what should Jesus have answered? <laughs> what is truth? What should Jesus have answered? You see, as soon as you say, this is the truth, then it becomes an it. It becomes a substantival thing. A thing that can be Phariseed into a dogma. Because ultimately, the truth is not this set of teaching or this set of teaching. The truth is a person. The truth is Jesus himself. And to know the truth, it has to be to know Jesus. Gosh, do you know what Jesus was doing? He was inviting Pilate to come and stand next to him. There was no other option. He couldn't have done anything else. Pilate had to. You know, he was saying to him, give up everything you have, have and come and stand with me. That's the only way you will know the truth. It, oh, it's too much, isn't it? It's too much. That's what he said to the rich young ruler, do you remember? When he said, give up everything you have, come up and follow me. And that's what he's saying to Pilate right now. Talk about an encounter. It's so unfair, isn't it? He's, he's asking too much. <laughs> he's asking Pilate to give away all his public credibility, to give away all his reputation, to give away his career, because there's only two options. You either stay with it, Pilate, and you're a coward. Or you come with me and you die. Think about it. May God bless you today.